our last speaker is Sanya and my friend from also from ISU, from the National Space University. Um, in fact, crew that you see tonight here are all people from the International Space University Summer Program. Uh, Sanya and I had an amazing honor to be here uh, as participants in 2012 when we were in the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And we are kind of to blame for this entire setting as we believe that we should share the experiences of these people and also their ideas about where things are going to you and so you can have um, a, better, a better idea of how you or maybe somebody you know who is very passionate about this kind of information who you can share this information to can participate as well at some point. Um, we really believe that uh, we should not keep our heads closed in any of the society that we are in. We've learned and we had an opportunity to be all around the world and see a lot of options. And uh, we think that this kind of information gathering or information acquiring from, from the, in an informal setting like this can be very helpful for everybody. Dabush is, is a very interesting guy. He's a uh, been on basically all the continents uh, on the planet. I'm ready, I'm ready. Yeah, he's ready. He come here. <coughs> and uh, he's, he did a very interesting like set of talks with a, a lot of very, very important, influential people around the world, and he's going to tell you a little bit about leadership. And yeah. So I'm the last one. I'm going to start with a beautiful poem. It's a, it's a poem written by the Sufi poet Rumi in the 13th century in Arabia. It's a coincidence. And, uh, and Rumi says that the breeze at dawn has secrets to tell you. So do not go back to sleep. You must ask for what you really want. Do not go back to sleep. People go back and forth between the worlds at that hour. So do not go back to sleep. You must ask for what you really, really want. So do not go back to sleep. And the question is, how many of us really know when they wake, they, when they wake up in the middle of the night what they, they really want to do in life? What is their burning desire, their burning passion? How many of us know how to listen to the voice of the heart speaking to us before the dawn? And uh, how many of us know even during the day what we really, really want in life? Just like many of you here today, I was a normal child growing up, growing up in a normal, uh, in a normal town in Romania, finishing up from a normal university and starting up in a 9 to 5 job. However, when I was 24 years old, something happened and uh, I lost my mind. At least, this is what my, my parents believed. This is what my friends and colleagues of work and in the university, this is what they believed about. <coughs> because one day when we were just having a cup of coffee in a coffee shop, out of the, out of the blue I told them, you know my friends, this year I want to go to explore Antarctica. I want to go explore the North Pole. I want to see the coldest regions in the world. I want to see the glaciers, the penguins, and the northern lights in the North Pole. And I guarantee you, this was not normal for anyone. And, uh, However, when I found myself saying this kind of things, I had many ideas in the past, but this time was different because this time I actually allowed for the possibility that my idea had become real. So I had no money, no high connections, I didn't have any idea of how can I do it, okay, how you're just a guy from Eastern Europe, how do you travel to Antarctica? You have no money, you don't know who to call, you have no idea how to start. So what I've done, I, I just began following any idea that came to my mind. So I wrote to every single polar institute in the world to ask them if I can go on one of their expeditions with them. Obviously they said no. I, uh, I tried getting a job at one of the research centers in Antarctica. Anything, washing dishes, being the, the truck driver, I would have done anything to, to do this. It's not, nothing worked. I even called NASA one day, asking them, are you willing to take me with you for uh, your plane, going to Antarctica to, de to deliver supplies? And who is this crazy guy calling us? I would do anything. I tried to, to get a job on a commercial cruise ship to wash dishes. I was doing a PhD in the time, in space engineering, and I said, what if I do a proposal and the European Union is the money? 
nothing worked. I was hoping for a scholarship, nothing. I spent half a year every day for, for six months, day and night, following any idea that came to my mind. And I want to ask you, how many of you know or have experienced the, the pain that you feel when you have a dream and you don't know how to accomplish it? Yeah. Okay. You know the thing, right? Okay. However, as the poem says, the breeze had dawn had secrets to tell me so. I woke up one night at 3 a.m. with an idea. And if you ever get an idea at 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning, usually it happens over and over again. If you get an idea at that time of night, just follow it because ideas are very powerful when it comes at that night. Because at that time of the night, which is called the magic hour or the golden hour, ideas come directly from spirit or from the human heart, as some would say. All the mind is sleeping, all the opinions of others are sleeping, and the ideas you get at that time of night are very powerful. So this is the naive idea I had. My passion, the easiest thing for me in those times was, uh, was photography. So I said, why am I not just being honest about who I am? I ask companies or whoever can take me with them, I'm going to take pictures for you, can you please take me with you on your ship? And I sent an email to every single company in the world who had a ship going to Antarctica. And to my surprise, the great majority of them simply ignored me. Or people do. <coughs> Some of them, they said no. But only one, a single company from South America, that is the other side of the world, in Chile, they said yes, welcome aboard. You know, when, when that happened, I couldn't even leave my because I didn't have a professional camera, I had no equipment, but I just sent the idea and they said yes. So anyway, I borrowed all the, the equipment I needed and I went to explore the South Pole. You see the penguins, the glaciers. From there I flew directly to the North Pole. You see the Northern Lights. This is again the North Pole. The idea is, that's how powerful your ideas, your actions, your persistence, your prayers, your hopes, your heartfelt desires are. And in the following years, I had many similar ideas, and some of them worked, and some of them were complete failures. For example, I organized with some friends from the Romanian Space Agency the first simulation mission for planet Mars, as my colleague here asked me. And then I, I, I finished the best space university in the world, the NASA Kennedy Space Center. But, <coughs> I didn't know what made the difference between projects and ideas that failed completely and the ones that did work. And they, they worked in a, in a surprising way. So for that reason, I had to learn two things. And usually if you read self-help books, if you, read, if you go to seminars or uh, attend to lectures, not many people will say this to you, but believe me, it's true. I'm sure that you have experienced them. First of all, following your dreams and following what you want to do in life, it's very, very, very hard. It's, it's hard, it's painful, and the dreams you have are so fragile that they can fall apart in any moment. And number two, the, the, uh, the pain you have, the pain of you not trying, is a million times more terrible, more excruciating than the pain of you trying and failing again and again and again. So, in order to be able to share this thing with you, I had to find out, because I'm a scientist and I don't believe in you know, all the mystical things happening or you can see on the market, I had to find out from the best minds in the world what allowed them to reach such high levels of success. People who spent decades working on their visions, what allowed them to go all the way to the end. I had to find out what was the secret that the breeze that Dawn told me and what is telling each one of us. So six years ago, I began a journey on five continents from South America, North America, all the way to Europe, Asia, and Australia, and down in New Zealand. Speaking to some of the best scientists, some of the best minds in the world, discover how did they do it, how did they think, and how we can do the same. Just to give you some names. I had the chance to speak to the work. I'm a dear friend of the, of the person from NASA, the director of NASA, who built Hubble Space Telescope. And he spent 15 years working on Hubble Space Telescope. He's the masterpiece of technology and innovation. He's the crown jewel of NASA and the, the holy grail of space exploration that National Geographic calls Hubble. I had a chance to work with a, a professor from Stanford who sent three robots to Mars. He's in charge 
some of the Mars project puts curiosity, puts spirit and opportunity, three of them together successfully on Mars. And I asked them, what made you persist for decades to work and to fail and to, to work? Because it's not easy to send a robot to Mars. What allowed you to do all these kind of things? And they told me. And it's one thing and one thing only. Secondly, I wanted to see if this information is complete because when I was young, I wanted to become a musician. So, do musicians work in the same way as scientists? So, I had the chance to speak with rock stars. Yes, uh, guitar players like Steve Vai, who turned the music into magic with their instruments. And they say the same thing, and one thing only. And then I flew directly to Asia to speak with Buddhist monks. And I wanted to learn from them. What is the secret that they know that allows them to just spend decades walking around without any shoes in the streets of Colombo in Sri Lanka? And simply everything they were doing is just share their love, their compassion, their kindness, and their wisdom. Everyone could listen. This is what they were doing. And everyone said the same thing. Everyone said one thing. And it's so simple, but sometimes so difficult to do for us. And that thing is. This is the thing that the prison dog has to tell you. You have to be in love in life. You have to be in love with what you are doing. And not just at a superficial level, but really deep down in your heart, you have to be in love with what you are doing. All these people, they love building spaceships. They love traveling into space. They love their, their science. They love playing music. They love touring the world with band. They, they love their spiritual journeys. And I have understood why some of projects that I had failed and why some succeeded because I was one of the ones that succeeded and I didn't care so much about the other ones. That's the key. The question is, what do you care so much about in life? What is it that lifts you up and makes you smile all the time whenever you think about it? Now, how many people here are over 18? <laughs> and, right, okay. So, Usually, as we grow older, we find ourselves meeting the greatest struggle of our lives. Usually, especially in those times, we, have, we are filled with anxiety, we are filled with fear about what the future will bring, the media is feeding on our fears. But sometimes, and most of the time, sometimes we try, almost always, we fail to answer the question. And the way we answer this question changes everything. Simply the question is, who am I? What's my purpose? How can I be more happy? How can we even dare to be happier, to ask for happiness, when we don't have the courage to be honest with ourselves? That's the key question that I'm asking grown-ups. How can we ask for happiness when we don't have the courage to give our truth? So the only way to be free in life and to be in love with what you're doing is to have the courage to live your truth, to know who you are and to be who you are in every single moment of every single day. That's what it, means, what, what it means to be authentic. That's what it means to be in love with what you're doing. To know who you are and to be who you are in every moment of every day. Are you probably wondering what's the connection of you know, being in love and doing the things that you have to do in life? And maybe authenticity and doing what you love is a, like an esoteric concept. It's, a, it's a, not so clear. The thing is, we come into this world with a technology inside our bodies that allows us to know from the very beginning if we are heading in the right direction and if we have the chance to go together. And this technology, some people call it the technology of prayer, some, some people call it the, the, the science of bringing miracles into reality. This technology has been removed from our most uh, sacred texts. This technology is so simple to understand. Think about it for a moment. Imagine a horse, a carriage, and a driver. What is the only way for this ensemble to go somewhere together? <clears throat> the only way for them to go together is to go into the same direction. Now, the driver is your mind. The driver doesn't have the power to pull the entire ensemble together, but it has the power to give a direction. I'm going that way. The horse is your emotions. It's the raw energy of what you love in life. However, you have all seen 
how dangerous motion can be in our world without a mind to guide the motion. And the carriage is simply our body. Without mind and without emotions, it's just dead. But this is the key for the three of them to work together. The moment you align what you think, with what you feel, and with what you do, the moment you align thought, feeling, and emotion, and this is the whole paragraph, the moment you align the three together, you make them as one, in that moment you say to the mountain, mountain, move away. And what will the mountain do? The mountain will not go anywhere. But in that moment, you will have found the power within yourself to climb the mountain all the way to the top. That's the power that we carry within ourselves. When you are putting yourself, when you act as you feel and as you think, that's when you have, when you find yourself, the resilience to, to fail, the confidence to fail, to keep on and to keep on keeping on. And when you're authentic and you are true to yourself, in that moment, Every hit, every blow you receive will only make you stronger. And uh, I love this quote from the movie Rocky. And Rocky says, in life, it doesn't matter how hard you hit. It only matters how hard you can get hit. How hard, how, how hard you can get hit and continue moving forward. How hard you can get hit and continue moving forward. When you are being true to yourself, <clears throat> every hit you receive makes you stronger. But the moment you are lying to yourself, when you are not to who you are, in that moment you don't stand a chance, because in that moment you have become your worst enemy, because you are attacking yourself from the within. So, when you become authentic to yourselves, when you think and feel and you go and you do and take actions in the same direction, in that moment you learn the secrets you don't have to tell you. So, can I put that music a bit harder? I want to leave you the final thought. And uh, we are seven plus billion people in this world today. And from these seven plus billion people, there is no one like you. Think about it for a moment. You are totally and completely unique. And nobody can become you, nobody can be you. And from these seven plus billion people, if you do not become who you are, you are to be, then who can? If you are not in love with your life, who can be? If you don't want to follow your dreams, if you don't listen to your own heart, who can do it for you? If you don't have faith in yourself, if you don't believe in your dreams, if you don't see how powerful you can be, who can do it for you? And if you don't see the beauty that's within yourself, like around to the left, to the right, behind you, if you're not kind to yourself, if you're not kind to the others, there's no one to do it for you. So, just to, before I say tonight, I want to say thank you. I want to say do not condemn who you were yesterday. I want to say bless the person who you are today because that's the most important thing. And I want to say dream of the one who you can become tomorrow because that's the real power that you carry within you. To be who you really want to be. Well, thank you. Thank you.